picture this. My lab members and I are at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee. It's a beautiful, dark, serene forest. And as we're setting up our tents and our equipment, we're actually surrounded by thousands of little lights. And each one of these twinkling lights is a little firefly that is dancing around us. We try to follow their pattern and predict where the next flash will occur, but they all just seem to be disappearing in an instant. And at that moment, I started feeling this familiar tingle of uncertainty because I'm actually the one who brought us all here. Uh, a group of students and postdocs, physicists, computer scientists from my lab, in hopes of unraveling the mystery of firefly synchronization. It's a rare phenomenon, but it's also one of the most intriguing enigmas in complex system science. And that's because it illustrates beautifully how a system of seemingly simple organisms can coordinate their activity in perfect unison without the need of central control or a leader. But there was no guarantee of success, and the pressure was definitely on. And despite being light years away from the nearest star, I actually found myself gazing up and finding some comfort in the patterns from the constellation in the sky. I actually found my way to fireflies through the stars. As a teenager, I remember being struck by the sense of being a small, small creature surrounded by a vast, vast universe. And that size discrepancy between the individual building blocks and the entire system is common in physics. And you can see it in many different examples, from atoms that coalesce into lattices, to soap bubbles that um, coalesce as well, and to larger structures like concrete bridges that vibrate in resonance. And what ties all of these examples together is the underlying physics of complex systems where individual building blocks interact with each other locally and sometimes leading to unexpected global behavior. Later, when I was an undergrad student, I took a physics class about dynamical systems and we learned about really complex physical concepts like superconducting. And to this day, I remember the thrill of learning that the same physical principles that explain how electrons in a superconductor synchronize their movement to achieve superconductivity, the same principles can also explain how swarms of fireflies synchronize their flashes. And that planted the seed in my head for the fascination with the problem of firefly synchronization, eventually leading me to become an interdisciplinary scientist studying complex biological systems. So what is it about fireflies and why do they light up during the night? It turns out that it's part of their mating behavior. One firefly would produce a pattern of flash on, flash off, and then another firefly nearby might respond in another pattern of flash on, flash off. And there's actually thousands of species of fireflies. Each species has its own unique pattern, and you can see a few examples here on the screen. Males would produce their species-specific flash pattern, and then if a female recognizes a male from her own species, she would respond also in a species-specific flash pattern. So you might already get the sense that this is a fairly simple communication signal. To some extent, it's a collection of light-on, light-off events, really similar to Morse code, maybe as close as it gets to a computer language in the animal kingdom. Even with this really simple communication signal, visual occlusion can be a real issue. So to illustrate it, let's do a little thought experiment. Imagine that you're in a forest and you're surrounded by a single firefly, and this firefly is flashing and you can see the flashes, but you cannot see the firefly when it's not flashing. Because there's only one firefly, you can still connect the dots and say which pattern this individual produced and maybe which species it is. But as soon as there is more than one firefly, and the problem actually becomes even more difficult when there's swarms of fireflies, which happens quite often during their mating behavior, then it becomes really difficult to connect the dots and say what pattern each individual produced and which species it's from. And one way in which fireflies deal with this problem is by synchronizing their flashes. And here's an example of that behavior. By doing that, they immediately increase their signal, the flash pattern of their own species, versus the noise, the, the rest of the flashes around. 
So how do fireflies synchronize their flashes? Um, it turns out that scientists are still trying to figure out exactly how it works. One theory is that a single firefly would produce its species-specific flash pattern, periodic flash-on, flash-off. A little bit like a metronome would sway right and left in a periodic behavior. And then if another firefly from the same species is nearby, there is no guarantee that it would be temporarily aligned and synchronized. And here is an example where two fireflies are not synchronized. But if a firefly can perceive the flashes coming from other fireflies, and adjust its own behavior and flashing behavior accordingly, then maybe after a while they'll become synchronized. In a process that works very similarly to how metronomes would synchronize to each other if they're placed on this flimsy platform. And these metronomes will synchronize, not by chance, but because small vibrations from one metronome that is swaying right and left would propagate through that platform to another and this couples the metronomes mechanically. For the fireflies, the coupling would be more social, of course. So when I opened my own lab, I recalled the problem of firefly synchronization. And at first, I was surprised to see that, that there's not a lot of empirical quantitative data to connect to some of these beautiful models. And later on, I learned sort of the hard way <laughs> that this was for very good reasons. First of all, Fireflies exist as flashing adults for only two weeks out of the entire year. So you really have to be with these fireflies at the right time in order to capture their synchronization. Second, the flashes of fireflies are so dim that until not very long ago, researchers had to go out to the field with these clumsy, ad hoc photomultiplier tubes that are sensitive enough to capture the dim light of fireflies. And nowadays, actually, we can work with off-the-shelf cameras and even smartphones uh, and still get the data we need. So the timing was ripe, and I decided to drive my lab to the Smoky Mountains. And together with a lot of equipment and a good sense of adventure, we hiked, sometimes miles, uh, to the natural environment of these fireflies. And our cameras were able to produce the synchronous flash patterns that these fireflies produce, um, and we actually had a set of cameras in a, a method called stereo vision, so we were able to reconstruct the three-dimensional pattern of flashes of thousands of fireflies for the first time ever. And analyzing these results led to some surprising discoveries. First of all, we were able to capture the onset of synchronization and show that it's a function of the density of firefly flashing around. At the top here, you see the signature of the swarm when there's not a lot of flashes. And then as soon as many of, enough of them are around, they're able to achieve their beautiful bursty pattern as a group. But actually, when we look closer at what individual fireflies do, we found something even more surprising. We found that individual fireflies don't behave periodically, a little bit like metronomes. They actually behave more randomly and they produce sporadic patterns, and only when there's enough fireflies around, that's when they also acquire not just the synchronization, but also the rhythm of these individuals. So another way to think about this is that solitary individual fireflies are a little bit more like the sound of soft crashing waves at the ocean, and they only get their very punctual, predictable, metronome-like sound when they are in a group. So this remains to be proven, but if the goal is to synchronize, perhaps it doesn't really make sense to flash a lot and flash periodically when there's no other firefly around, just as it wouldn't really make sense to update your dating app page when nobody else is using this app. And my colleagues and I recently published a new mathematical theory to explain this emergent rhythmicity, but our experiments are already ahead and show some really exciting patterns in not just the temporal aspect, but also in how these flashes move in space, and new models would need to account for those. For example, we found that fireflies produce the wave. Uh, you can see an example of this here. The blue flashes are fireflies that flash earlier in a burst, and then they propagate throughout this picture. When we measure the wave uh, speed, it actually turns out that it's an order of magnitude higher than the speed of firefly in flight. 
so in a sense, what's happening here is a little bit like the wave you sometimes see in a sporting event. And then when we look at individual fireflies, again, we find some really interesting things. For example, we find that these early uh, flashes that flash in a burst, they move faster than individuals that flash later in a burst. So in a sense, these early flashers uh, draw these beautiful lines of uh, light with their lantern compared to the more compact trajectory of late flashers in a burst. And maybe it's not surprising that there is the potential to encode information in movement. There's actually lots of species of fireflies that acquire their nickname based on the way they move. For example, the loopy fireflies you see here at the top, and also the big deeper fireflies that you see here at the bottom. And there's just so many variability and beautiful things to learn about these fireflies and how they potentially encode information in not just temporal patterns, but also movement patterns. So I started working with fireflies because of their beauty. But I also learned that nature can inspire us in some unpredictable way. And if we can capture the mechanism of synchronization of fireflies in an algorithm, it could help us solve any number of riddles in complex system science. For example, if we think about biological timekeepers, maybe we could better understand how all of our heart cells uh, contract at the same time in unison, and eventually that leads to, to blood pumping throughout our entire body. Another example would be synchronization of neurons that actually sometimes lead to bad side effects like epilepsy. And going beyond biology, one of the frontiers in robotics are, is bio-inspired swarms, where individual robots cannot um, achieve a lot by themselves, but actually when they come together in groups of thousands, they're able to explore new territories from the bottom of the deep sea to maybe even new planets. What I really want you to take away from all of this is that fireflies are a stunning example of how individual actions that may seem a little random, non-periodic, can actually lead to something that is greater than the sum of their parts. And as poet Richard Newman said, fireflies are bettering the stars. And I think they do this because they show us how the complex systems around us are not limited to the physical laws that govern our universe. They also include the intricate social structure and behavior of the animals that inhibit it. And that includes humans and even scientists. Through my own journey, I learned that I was somewhere in between disciplines, uh, physics, biology, computer science, um, but still within the great complex system of science. And just like these solitary fireflies that deviate from the main rhythm, I learned that it's OK to follow your own path, even if it seems unconventional. It actually made me develop a greater appreciation for the beauty and complexity of our world, from the smallest of fireflies to the grandest of galaxies. And I hope we could all embrace these wonders, and who knows what else we might discover and illuminate along the way. Thank you.